Well, good morning, Emmanuel. Come on, give God a hand praise. For God is good and he is worthy of our praise. Amen. Let the church say amen. For it is good that God allowed us to dwell in his presence one more time. Amen. And David says for us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. He said for us to serve him with gladness and to come before his presence with singing. Amen. And he says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. And he is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Amen, somebody. And we are God's people coming into God's house with a praise of thanksgiving and with praise. Amen. And as we come before our listeners out there, we welcome them into our house of worship. Amen. And if you are here this morning, would you stand with us? Stand with us and give God a, a hand of praise. Give him a hand of praise as we sing together, as we worship together. God will be in our presence. Amen. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. 
Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. take care of me. <clears throat> I'll be reading this morning from Mark the 10th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. And Jesus said, and Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples was astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished of a measure saying among themselves, When then can be when who then can be saved and jesus looking upon them said with the man it is impossible for not with god for with god all things are possible today let us pray oh heavenly father we thank you for this great day and father god we thank you for this second sunday Father God, we thank you for all the things that have went on across this week. And now, Lord, we are in this place of worship. Release them ones that came this morning, Lord, with things on their mind, Father God, that they cannot change. Father God, help them this morning to release and let go and let you have your way in their life. Bless this service that it will be all that you want it to be. And then bless our pastor, continue. A man that's after your own heart, Lord, let him down in you this morning that the word that he preached, Lord Jesus, that it will be with clarity and understanding that, Father God, that your peoples will understand your word today. Change their minds about you. How they are living each and every day even in this pandemic Lord Jesus we got our own excuses about what we want to do but Lord we gotta recognize that it's you and it's you only Lord that we got to count on every day let us release our lives to you Lord this day that we won't be afraid of this pandemic but Lord we will always remember to be careful now bless us all keep us through this service lord that we will render your service to each other lord that father god that we will pray and praise you all day sunday lord keep us continually in jesus name i pray amen
Come on, church. Amen. Come on and bless them right there. Every time we look back, every time we look back, we can see that God was wanting us to make one more step. It was for a purpose. Every time God does something, it's for a purpose to get us closer, closer to God. Amen. I feel close to him right now. I feel God is in the midst this morning. Amen. Can you feel God's presence this morning? Amen. I, I feel like he, I'm just going to dive on in because God is with us. Amen. If you want to get closer to him, the first place to start is prayer. 
It's prayer time, church. And if you want to get closer to him, I mean, you really want to walk with him and he to walk with you. The first step is prayer. And it's all to prayer time. And, and, and as I'm talking, if you desire to be anointed, amen. We have, amen. Reverend Williams will anoint you with oil. Amen. But here's what Paul says. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 6 to be anxious for nothing. Not for the folks who are in a rush this morning. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, somebody say everything, everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests, what are you requesting this morning? Let that, let that be made known unto God. And then the peace of God will come into your heart which gives you surpassing all of your understanding. You don't know how it's going to work out. But he'll guard your mind through Christ Jesus. Now, I, I, can't, I can't pay for that. You can't pay for God's peace. But God's peace is available right now. Just grab a hold of it and pull it into your heart. God is faithful. And we have a prayer list this morning and that we have that have been made known unto us. And we have our bereaved family, the Ferguson family in passing of Sister Willie Mae Ferguson. Reverend Dwayne Ruffin, who was just with us last Sunday, the guest minister, in the passing of his wife, my God, Sister Laverne Ruffin, my God, Sister Mariah Wallace and the Wallace and Horton family, continuing in our prayer for that family. Sister Jennifer Bowers and family, Jesse Jordan Horton Jr. for his schooling in Alabama and the testimony has come that he's back home. I said he's back home. Amen. God brought him back home. Amen. We thank God for that. And then I was sick and shut in. Sister Kathy Ford and Olivia Welch. Sister Lindsay McGee, the daughter of Sister Fonda McGee. Sister Jackie Ford in Chicago, Illinois. Reverend Harry Jenkins, Sister Pearlie May Jenkins, Rose Jenkins, Dorothy Jenkins, Ray Lewis, Yolanda Lewis, Leona Brox, Brother and Sister Eric Terry and family, Aubrey Irving, Ziona Mosley, Adeline Lewis, Jordan Brown, and then we have you, the Emmanuel Church family, the pastors in Jackson, and all in our areas that are closed. Pray for those churches and families and pastors. And last but not least, remember our own pastor, amen, and the first lady of the church. Remember them in prayer, amen. And then, of course, Reverend Irvin Keyes will come and lead us to the throne of grace and mercy. And you pray along with Reverend Keyes that God would hear the prayers of the righteous. Amen? Amen. Reverend Keyes, would you come? Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, Father, we thank you. Thank you for allowing us to assemble around your holy altar, God. Father, we thank you for how you blessed us across last week and to bring us back into the house of prayer. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done, Lord. It was not because we have done anything that's so good to deserve your mercy and your grace, but you are so loving, you're so kind, Lord. 
to extend your hand of mercy and grace to us, Lord, and give us another opportunity to stand before your holy throne, Lord, and ask you in request of you, Lord, those blessings that we stand in need of, Lord. We stand in need of healing today, Lord. Stand in need of comforting, Lord. All that who are sick and shut in, Lord. All that who are went through certain trials and tribulation, Lord. We thank you for how you brought them out, Lord, and how you allowed them to accomplish that, which they were seeking to endeavor, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. Bless those that are around this altar, Lord. Bless those that have, have seek for uh, anointing. Bless them especially, Lord, according to their request, Lord. Lord, be sensitive to them, Lord. Please forgive them, Lord. The scripture said if they have committed sin, no, Lord, you said it shall be forgiven. If there's sickness, it shall be healed, Lord. Bless those that are around this altar, Lord. Comfort them right now, Lord, like no other God can, Lord. Bless our pastor. Bless him as he come to stand. Bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Oh, God, we know you have given him a word, Lord. Just open him up, Lord, and pour him out onto us, Lord, that we may receive that word with joyness, Lord, and gladness, Lord, that we may go out into this sinful and wicked world, Lord, and proclaim your word between the living and the dead, Lord. Bless us, oh God, and we'll forever praise you, Lord. We just commit and commit ourselves into your holy hand, Lord, and we claim the victory in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, and amen. Would you give God a hand praise now? Amen. Give him a praise. Amen. He didn't have to hear our prayers, but he had. He gave us an opportunity. One more opportunity to call on his name. Amen. He said, if we call on him, he would answer. Amen. What time is it, church? What time is it? That's what time it is, Welcome amen. To it's time to give unto God, amen, our tithe, amen, our offerings, amen. And this is what we should do with an obedient heart, amen, that we would give no, just unto got to a God, amen, that we would give to a God that is gracious to give us Amen. Each and every moment. Amen. So we have our ushers. Amen. Coming down the aisles. Amen. And to those who are listening to us. Amen. Via social media. Amen. We know you are faithful. We know you are listening. And we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for using GiveLify, amen, many members and even those who are not members of our church, amen, who are pouring in financial blessings through GiveLify. And we thank you in advance for being a faithful giver, amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. But with the same measure 
that you use, it will be measured back to you in return. That is the word of God. Amen. And we thank God for each of you who has given to this our church. Amen. All hearts and minds satisfied. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being a gracious and giving God that you gave unto us so graciously. And now, God, we in return are giving to you our tithe, our offering, our gifts of love. Father, we pray you would multiply it and use it to the benefit and the building of this, your kingdom here on earth. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, we pray a amen. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am, for being a wonderful giver. Amen. Now it's time to fasten your seatbelts. Amen. I said now it's time to lock in, buckle down, hold your road, because God's word is about to come forward. Amen. After this song, we're going to hear. I mean, you got time to get your mind ready. God will give you time to, to get your thoughts ready. To unload of some things that, that need to be taken from you. Amen. Because God's word will come in. And if we hide his word in our heart, the Bible says that we would not sin against this God. Amen. So let's give our choir, our brothers, amen. Let's give them one more round of love as they come. And the next voice that you will hear will be from our own. I said from our own. The one and the only, the Reverend Dr. Jesse Horton Sr. Give him some love this morning.
will amen. amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You can take everything. It, listen, everything. Take everything. Everything. I mean everything to the Lord in prayer. It don't, it don't get too small and it don't get too large. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Thank God for our magnificent eight uh, blessing us on today. Uh, I see our male corps were dressed and ready, but they let the eight take it on today. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Now, you, you can say what you want to say. It ain't nothing like them older songs. I, I, I don't care how fast you get it. I don't care how much rhythm and rock is to it. It's nothing like our older songs. Have meaning. Take it to the Lord. Some of y'all looking at me right now. You brought some stuff to church with you today. You should have took it to the Lord and left it there. You, you brought it to church with you when you should have left it with the Lord. And if you leave it with the Lord in prayer, amen, you'll feel so much better. Got to leave it with the Lord. Amen. It'll kill you, but if you leave with him, he'll heal you. Amen. Amen. Well, I've been talking about this I am. Take it to the I am in prayer. Amen. We finna, we finna look back at the I am. A amen. Last Sunday, we looked at the I am. Uh, John 6, verse number 35, and I talked about fed by the I am. Now, now, now today, we're going we to look at verse uh, 47 and verse 51. A amen. Amen. Trusting in the I am. Amen. Read 47 for me. Remain standing because this house is the house of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. for the living bread. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you thank him today for the living bread? Oh, God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now to say thank you. Thank you for the living bread. Thank you. Thank you for the living bread that is made available to the whole world. Thank you for the living bread. I pray now that you would anoint and bless afresh now my voice that I will speak with clarity, my mind that I will speak with understanding, my eye that I will see clearly, my body that I will be able to move. But again, allow the Holy Spirit to continue working in our midst, and we will ever praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Because he's already at work. And, and this morning, I want to talk about if any man, if any man eat this bread, if any man eat this bread, I am the living bread. 
which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Amen. The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This word that I'm going to give you now, this bread I'm going to give you, it's, it's my flesh. He said, it's my flesh. It's my flesh. If you can't eat flesh, you're going to miss the meal today. If you're not a flesh eater, you're going to miss the word. Today you got to be a flesh eater. Look at what he says. John 1 and 1. Amen. In the beginning was the word. And the word. <laughs> I like this, you all. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The word. If, if, you, if you're a little hesitant now about eating flesh, the word is the flesh. The word is the flesh. The word is the flesh. When you eat of his word, you are eating of him. And I want you all to make sure you leave here filled to the brim today. Because some of y'all looking at me, you ain't going to get no better till you eat this word. You ain't going to get no better till you learn how to eat this word, digest this word, get it into your soul, and it change your life. Change your life. So good to see Sister Sheriff this morning. She's had surgery and she's here today. You gotta eat the word. I said to you all last Sunday, the reason some of you all are so weak, any little thing caused you to flip out and throw a tantrum is because you're not eating the word. You may be looking at the word. You may be even reading the word, but you're not eating the word. You cannot eat the word and remain the same. And if you the same thing the day you were last week, you ain't eating the word. Because the word changes your life. Changes you. In the reading, I know that I know what the word do for me. I know what it did. It does not matter what you say or do, you're not going to change. It's the word that changed me. And all I can be is what the word say be. But the subject says if. It says, if, if any man eat this word, you don't have to eat it, but if you eat it, and he's not going to make you eat it. No, no, no. You, you, you got to want to eat this here. A -a Amen. I mean, the meal is already fixed. It's available. You just have to eat this word. Now, li listen, this word, not some other word, but this word. You got to eat this word. 
This word. Amen. This word. There's a lot of books out there. My, my, mama, mama used to fix it. Yeah, this word. And when mama got through fixing the meal, yeah. that was what you ate. That's yeah. what you ate. Yeah. And sometime she'd have old Bessie sitting in the corner. And if you didn't eat it, you got to whip it. Whether you like it or not, you going to eat it. And you didn't, you didn't do like the little kids do today. Nibble and eat the crust. You'd eat everything that was in there. Hey. Amen. Do y'all remember that? Yes, sir. And, and when you didn't eat it, if she, if she turned her back, turned away, you put it in your pocket. <laughs> you just made sure the plate was clean. Now the children eat whatever they want to eat, when they want to eat it, the way they want to eat it. Amen. Mama, you know I don't eat that. Yeah, what you want, baby? If any man yeah. eat this bread, a person must believe on Christ. Yeah. The person who believes has eternal life. Yeah. Christ called for man to pay close attention. Yeah. Yeah. He says, verily, verily, right. listen. Yeah. Listen, show sure enough, show sure enough, pay close attention to what I'm about to say. What he now says is critical. A person must believe at least four things. They must believe at least four things. Four things. Number one, number one, a person must believe that Christ is that bread of life. All right. Now, now you must believe that Christ is the bread of life. The bread that feeds and nourishes a man spiritually, that saves and gives man life. 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 The bread, the bread you have for breakfast will give you life for now. But this bread gives you life forever. You will never die. Amen. You will never, never die. Note the Lord's claim, I am that bread of life. His claim, I am that bread of life. Note how forceful the claim is. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Number one, number one, you must believe. You must believe that he is that bread. Let's look at John 6.32. John 6.32. There it is. Read it for me. Amen. Jesus then said unto them, Show sure enough, show sure enough. Truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. He didn't give you that bread. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Amen. They got bread in the wilderness. They got that manna, but it wasn't the true bread. Amen. They got some bread. They didn't get the bread out of heaven. Thank God for the living bread that is for any man who will eat of it. 
Number two, number two, a man must believe that Christ is out of heaven. You got to believe this now. Christ is not just from the womb of Mary. Christ is out of heaven into the womb of Mary. Now, now you got to believe that. You got to believe that. This is living bread. Amen. This is living bread. You can't cook this bread. This is living bread. You can't make this bread up. This is living bread. You can't kill this bread. This bread is life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this bread. John put emphasis on this bread. There's none other bread like this bread. Oh, glory to his name. A man must believe that this bread came out of heaven. That he has came uh, into the world to deliver man from death. He came into this world to deliver man from death because death is a sentence that had been placed upon all man who sinned. But Christ came to make sure man didn't have to die. He don't have to die. If you don't believe it, let's, let, let's look at Hebrew 9, 27. Let, read it for me. Now, you can't change that. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. And right after dying, he said, the judgment. That's, that's the way the plan was to go. But thank God for the living bread. If I can believe in the living bread, I have life forever. Christ claims two things. He has come out of heaven from God himself. Out of heaven from God himself. If a man eat and partake of him, that man will not die. That man will not die. If you, if you believe, that person will not die die. Now you can call me dead if you want to when I leave here, but I will not be dead. I will fall asleep one day. I, I will not die. Now you can count me dead. You can say I'm dead, but that don't make me dead. Because I will not die. No believer is going to die. Every believer will go to sleep. And we will be awakened out of our sleep. And you won't be hard to wake up. It does not matter how long you've been in the cemetery. It does not matter if they got you in a steel vault and they got the key in their hand. On that great day, when he come out to me and Al and say, time hell been, won't be no more. And the dead that died in Christ will get up. To meet the Lord in there. Go get up. Go, go, go get up. Now I'm excited about getting up. But I, I, I do feel better being caught up. Yeah. <laughs> 
That means I'm alive when he come back. I'll, then I'll just be caught up. A amen. amen. The only difference in, in the being caught up, you're going to have to come behind them who are called up. I'll be going behind them. They're going to get up first. Oh, glory. Th thank God. Thank God. Oh. They shall never die, but live forever. The bread is living. It is a life. The worry, the worry, listen, listen to this. The worry, the worry, the worry are literally the bread of life. The worry is literally the bread of life. Again, he said, and my word became flesh and dwelt among them. Do y'all remember reading that? And dwelled among them. Listen, the word is flesh. You, you, you can eat the word, the living word, the living word, literally, the bread is alive. It lives and it came down from heaven. Amen, amen. The phrase came down is again in the original term, which means Christ came once. He came once and only once. It does not matter what these folks saying about I am Christ. Christ only came once. Uh, amen. Only once. Amen. Number one, number one, number one, number one, a person must believe that Christ is the bread of life. Number two, a man must believe that Christ is out of heaven. Number three, a man must believe that Christ is the living bread. The one who gave life to man forever. Forever. Let's look at John 5, 26. John 5, read it for me. Amen. For as the Father hath life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. Listen to this. Life is not outside of God. Life is not outside of Jesus. Life is in Jesus. And since it's in Jesus, no one can take the life from Jesus. Don't you like that man? It's in him. Life is in him. Now I'm glad about this because if I'm in Christ, I am in life. I am in life. Can I say it again? I'm not going to die because I am in life. Yes, sir. Yeah. I like that, Amen. I'm, I'm, Brother Price, I'm in life. Yes, sir. Thank God for the life. Number four, man must believe that Christ gave his flesh. Yes. Yes, that he gave his flesh yes, for the life of the world. Yes, sir. He gave his flesh yes. for the life of the whole world. World. He went on Calvary and gave his life, flesh, for the whole world, for, for the whole world to give man a chance 
to have life forever. Note that Christ identifies the bread. It is his flesh. That's what it is. Which he have given for the life of the world yeah. is his flesh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is his yes. flesh. Yes. It is the word. Yes. That's what every believer must be eating daily is the word of the Lord. If you expect to have life and life eternal, life everlasting, you got to stay in the word. Oh, glory. Let's look at Romans 8 and 3. You got to stay in that word. You got to be eating flesh every day. Read it for me. Oh, hallelujah. Some, hold somebody's time to shout right now. <laughs> Amen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. He came in sinful flesh and turned around and condemned sin in the flesh. What a God we say. What a God. You don't have to live in sin. If you are living in sin, it's because you will to do. Because if you eat of this way, you will have spiritually power to overcome your flesh. Because in your flesh alone is too weak. You can't handle sin. And you stop thinking you can handle sin. You cannot handle sin. Not in your flesh. You cannot say no to sin in your flesh. You need the living bread in you to say no to sin. And, and some of us, some of us take for granted about what we do and how we do. As soon as soon as I get through with this, uh, this, this I am, I, I've already committed to it. I, I'm gonna deal with that unpardonable sin. Cause there's a lot of folks around church. Yes, don't know they are committing some unpardonable sins. Yeah, because most folks think you got to walk out in the yard and go to cussing up down the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to tell it today, but it's just a lot of simple things. Yeah. That you can do as a unbeliever yeah. or a professing believer yes, that is unpardonable. But thank God for this bread. Yeah. And if any man eat yeah. this bread, yeah. he shall never die. Yeah. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. Thank God for this bread, and this bread is alive forevermore. This bread came in the flesh to die for the sins of the world. The world is in terrible shape. The world is in terrible shape. The, the world is really in a helpless and a hopeless condition. Just about where we are today. And Jesus shows up. He shows up born in Bethlehem. 
wrapped in swaddling clothes, tabernacled around here till he got 12 years old and stopped by the lawyers and doctor the house, asking, answering questions, left there. Yes, left there and goes and meet John at Jordan and said, John, need to be baptized. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the law and the prophecy might be fulfilled. Yes, he leaves there going to a wilderness and tempted 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. I'm talking about flesh. Yes, 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 sir. 40 days and 40 nights. Yes, and the enemy said, Jesus, yes. I, I, I know you're hungry. Turn these bread to stone. I know you have the power to do it. Turn these stone. And listen, if you just bow down and worship me, I want you to look around. I'll give you, I'll give you all you see. Boy, Satan is still tricking folks around the church by giving them a lot of stuff and they thinking God gave it to them. But when God gives stuff, it always bring you and the stuff to God. You don't take God's stuff down on the boat. You don't take the beautiful house God made and bless you with to turn it into a club drinking place. You, you know how a lot of our homes are now? They got bars in them. Supposed to be Christian home with bars in them. No, no, God didn't give you that house. He don't give a house up where you can become drunkers in the house. No, no. He said, I give it to you. I know a lot of y'all. No, the devil ain't got nothing. The devil got a whole lot of stuff he can give away. He'll give it to you too. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and to give it more abundantly. Oh, thank God. He winds up in the Garden of Gethsemane right. praying right. till sweat fell from him like drops of blood. Yeah. Father, oh. Father, oh. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, at thy will, yeah. oh, I'm glad today you are. That Jesus did not seek it to have his way. He sought to have it the Father's way. Oh. And he went on, y'all know where he went from there? He went in a judgment hall, tried all day and night. He went there, Pastor. And they found him. They found him guilty. And marched him out of there to a hill called Calvary and nailed him to a cross. Nailed him to a cross. Put a thorny crown on his head. He's in the flesh, making it possible that we would have bread that would help us to live forever. And I'm glad one legend said, while he lay there, he said, nail me if you think I'll fight. Ribbon my feet if you think I'll run. Hang me up above the earth where I can't get away. And they did it. They hung him up. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder, said, Father, Father, it's finished. 
Do y'all know what happened? He died. He died. Listen, he died. He died. He died. He died on that cross. But hallelujah. 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 Sunday morning. I said Sunday morning. Sunday morning. He got out of that grave with all power. All power. In his hand. In his hand. In his hand. All power. In his hand. In his hand. And he said, if I, but if I be lifted up, I will draw all me under me. If you eat this bread, this bread, this bread, not a loaf of bread, if you eat this bread, this bread, the living Word. This bread, dog. This bread. Yes, sir. This bread. You must eat bread. Oh, glory. Yeah. This bread. This bread. Yes, sir. This bread. This bread will do for you what roll eight in tongues. You must eat. Can't do for you. You eat this bread. This bread. It's a must, it will kill every ounce of hate that's in you. If you eat this bread, it will kill malice and envy and strife. This bread will kill all gossiping, backbiting. This bread will kill it. The old folk will say, stone dead. This bread, this bread will kill your snobbish attitude. Your raunchy ways. It'll kill selfishness. Gotta have it your way or no way. This bread will kill it. This bread. Thank God for this bread. And if any person eat of this bread, they will never be the same. Thank God for this bread. It was a little better than 52 years ago. I got me a belly full of this bread. It went in my belly and ended up in my soul. This bread changed my whole life. And it'll change yours today. Oh God, our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you will touch every person present today that they will eat this bread, that they will be healed, and that they will be delivered of all of their sinful ways and their sinful acts. Bless, Lord, they'll eat this bread, the living bread, that they will never die, but they will live forever. Bless now in Jesus' name. And all the people said amen, 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 amen. and a, amen.